welcome to what may feel like the never-ending project. But I promise, it is coming to an end. If you're new to my channel, this is the Captain's Quarters and I've been working really hard for the past two months to finish it up. Last week I worked on the console area on that side of the project, and this week I'm going to be working on this side. This side contains an infinity hallway that I put in quite a while ago, and this structure that for the longest time has had not really any purpose except to hold up the lights to shine through the stained glass windows. But this week I'm going to give it a purpose with this little figure. I am going to turn this into the figurehead of the ship the 17th century ship that's being contained right here in the center. I'm going to make this a restoration area and make it look as though the captain is working on this really old figurehead. So that means I'm going to be sculpting this week and I'm really excited for this because it's going to give a lot of history to the captain's story. So let's get started. This is the area that I plan to suspend the figurehead and make it look as though the captain is working on it. I can go ahead and unskewer her. That skewer was in there to put her in another part of the project where I thought she would exist. But for now, she's going to go in the second floor of that structure. To begin this process, I need to strengthen her because she's made from cardboard and masking tape, which isn't going to hold up really well when I start adding a lot of clay. So I'm going to be using this wood dowel to glue her to, and this is going to help support her cardboard armature. I'm using paper clay for this because I feel most comfortable using paper clay when I'm sculpting, and I'm not sure polymer clay would work very well because I don't think she'd stand up in the oven, especially with the hot glue I used to glue everything together. I'm going to begin by adding the clay all over her body just to give a base to start sculpting everything on. Now this is going to be the captain's true form. If you're not aware yet, the captain is actually an alien and she has a lot to do with the ocean. So what you're going to see me sculpting is going to look a little strange and that's because she is an alien. I'm going to be using this very special cardboard. This was brought home especially for me by my son. He told his teacher that his mother loves cardboard and so he was able to bring this home from school. So I told him I would be using it in my project, which I do need cardboard because I need to build up what will be the back part of this figurehead. I did quite a bit of research on real life figureheads and pulled up examples. They can be installed many different ways, but most of them look as though they're carved out of one big piece of wood that kind of juts out the front of the ship. So that is what I am creating here. And because I know I want to suspend it later on, I am adding this barbecue skewer through the cardboard so I know I have a way to hang it up later and I can keep that in mind as I'm sculpting. I'm adding some more cardboard and some masking tape to hold it all together. And then finally, I was able to cut off the end of the wood dowel. Even though it was a nice handle to hold onto as I was sculpting, it is going to be easier to cut it off now rather than later when I have a bunch of details already sculpted into my piece. I'm going to be sanding as I go because I do want to make this look as perfect as possible, even though later on I will be making it look old. When I first received the captain from Michaelina, the artist, the captain came with a medallion that was in the shape of the eye, and it kind of hung on her upper chest area, so I'm going to be sculpting that into the captain's alien form. And I do have to say, this is uh, not necessarily our captain, but the captain's species of alien that I'm sculpting. And also, I'm not going to be sculpting the face. I've decided to add a helmet onto this figure so that it continues to have a little bit of mystery. And if you're still confused, don't worry. I plan to tell the story in a future video. The figure heads that I was using as reference had a lot of clothing detail. So even though she is going to be more of an aquatic looking alien, I decided to add what looks like some kind of sash going across her chest area. And then it was time to add on the arms, or should I say more, the tentacles. And this was where it really got fun trying to figure out her pose. 
figureheads often have to have their arms and legs very close to their body because they are sculpted out of one piece of wood and if the arms were sticking out then they would be more likely to break off. So I didn't have too much time to make decisions about where her arms were going because the paper clay does dry pretty fast, but I decided to have one tentacle going up, kind of highlighting the eye area, and then I have another tentacle going in the downward position, and I'm going to be adding something into her arms a little bit later. When sculpting the eye in classical sculpture, you actually had to hollow out the iris and then have some something inside of it for the pupil. And the eye was just looking very blank to me, so I decided to try that process and I think it worked pretty well. I do plan to add paint, but I think this is more how a wooden sculpture would have been made back then. You will notice throughout this process I make a lot of tentacles by making little snakes of clay and then I just make them really pointed at one end. This is going to be quote unquote the tentacle hair coming off of the back of the head. You will see this part of her anatomy even though the head is mostly covered, well the face is covered by a helmet type structure. As I continue to place the tentacles, I'm trying to think in terms of a wooden carving so that I know that everything's supported and not as likely to break in my miniature and if it were a real wooden sculpture. So now I'm adding another snake of clay around what will be the face helmet and I'm just going to push that into the already dry clay so that it has a smooth transition. This is going to give the edge of the helmet. And at this point, I was trying to figure out how to make it not just look like she has a walnut on the front of her face. So I had to give some kind of nod to what an earth helmet might look like, just so people know what it is. So I decided to carve in some eye holes, except I'm carving in three of them. You still don't know what her face looks like, if she has three eyes, if she has no eyes, we don't know. Uh, we know at least she has one eye <laughs> in the front of her um, sternum area, but for now I'm just going to be making what looks like a helmet. I really want it to come across as though she's a warrior, a protector, uh, someone kind of fierce to stand up against. And now I need to add again more tentacles. These are going to be her legs, <laughs> her uh, tentacles. And um, it was at this point that I realized I had created a distant relative of Celia from Monsters Inc. But uh, the eyes in a little different place, so maybe <laughs> distant relative. But I'm still really happy with my design, and I think she does look very alien like, but at the same time, um, will have a lot to do with the ocean, which I think works with my theme all around because it's a 17th century ship, which has a lot to do with the ocean inside of a spaceship, which has a lot to do with aliens. So I hope you like how it's coming across. Instead of adding on several more thick layers of paper clay to cover up the cardboard, I decided to use some lightweight spackling. And I've used this many times before and I learned while I was using it in my shining project that you can smooth it down with some water on a paintbrush really easily. So I added big chunks of it and then laid it down onto the surface of the cardboard and that worked really, really well. I do want to remind you that if you do this, it pretty much ruins your paintbrush because all the drywall particles get into the bristles, but it works really, really well for this. It also made it look more like a sculpture, and so I decided to add some of it in the areas between the tentacles and the clothing, and as I kind of melt it into that area by using water on top of the spackling, it fills it in and it does look more like it was carved out of one single piece rather than having separate pieces of clay clumped together. So basically, I'm trying to make a subtractive sculpture, which is where you carve things away, by using additive sculpture processes, which was a very interesting thing to think through. So now that most of her is done, I need to add the item in her arms. If you watched the last couple videos, you will know that the name of the ship is the Montestrella, which is a type of coral. So I wanted to add some coral in her arms as the coral will play a big part of her story. 
And then the final step of the sculpting to really make this look like a figurehead was to make it look as though the back piece is made of wood and wood that has been kind of cut apart. So I'm using my knife and I'm just cutting into the clay over and over again to make it look like wood fibers. And I'm doing the same thing where the paper clay meets the spackling just so it has some of the wood texture. I've spent about three days sculpting this figurehead. I say that because in the video it's going to look like it took me about 10 minutes, but that's not reality. Of course I was doing other things in the meantime because there's a lot of dry time when it comes to working with paper clay. I am pretty happy with the results. I've tried to make it as smooth and perfected as I can, but it's not going to stay that way because it's supposed to look like a centuries old weathered piece of carved wood. So I'm definitely going to have to mess it up a little bit. I'm happy with the results, but you'll have to let me know in the comments if you would have done anything differently. But for now, I'm going to work on aging this. And during all of the dry time that is still going to be happening, I need to work on the part of the project where this is going to be hung. So let's get started on all of it. This was the final result of all that sculpting after everything had dried. As I said, I tried to keep everything as smooth as possible, but now it's time to mess it up. I'm using my pencil to create some vertical lines to help me figure out where the grain of the wood would be, because that's most likely where this item would split over time. It was a little difficult because it is created on a curve, but doing this process first really helped me envision where I need to add these grooves. I'm so glad I remembered I had these carving tools because one of the tools is shaped like a V and it's really good at creating deep gouges into my sculpture. I'm just going slowly trying to make sure I'm not sculpting towards any of my fingers because they are sharp carving tools. But this is the result after taking several gouges out of the sculpture and I do think it looks like deep splits in the grain of the wood. Now it's time to clean up all of that sculpting mess. Just kidding, I'm going to be using my hands. And I'm going to move on to the painting process. This is going to be hopefully very satisfying to see it all come together. I'm doing first a base coat of black that's going to get into all the cracks and crevices. And then I'm going over it with some gray because this is supposed to look like very old aged sun bleached wood. However, after the coat of gray, I decided I did want to add a little bit more brown to it as well, just to warm it up a bit. But as you can see, the gray really helps bring out some of the highlights. It brings out the shape of the captain's alien form and the brown really helps it look a little bit more like wood. Although I don't go too deep into the brown color, it's a very light brown. Now I can start adding colors that would have been painted onto the face of the wood. So I'm just going to very lightly add the colors onto the top of the forms I created. This is going to help divide up the individual features from each other. So you will see the captain's form, the sash, the coral, the helmet will all be separated and hopefully you will be able to pick out exactly what the captain's form looks like as opposed to other pieces that are just decorative ornaments. I'm dry brushing with some black a little bit more in the crevices to really bring out that dirt and grime would have gotten into these areas. And this is the final result of my painting. Looking at my references, I think this is pretty good. I, I, it's pretty close to what I wanted. I did want to keep a limited palette, so I did the orange in the eye and the coral, and then I did red on the sash and the helmet, and then I painted the captain a bright white because in the story she does glow, so that's what I was going with there. So now that this is done, we can work on hanging her in the restoration bay. This is what I'm going to be calling the upper floor of this area. Before I can get started with the chains I'm going to use to hang up the figurehead, I need to cut through some of these walkways. These aren't actually really walkways, they're more platforms, and I think it's going to give it more interest if they aren't just flat. So I'm going to be cutting a large hole in the top one so that the captain, while she's restoring this figurehead, can get to the top of the figurehead really easily. And this will also help some light get down in there, so this is a really accessible, easy to view area. 
I'm using ladders to allow the captain to reach each platform, so I'm going to start by cutting out a hole where the ladder is going to reach up to. This is going to be so much easier than stairs because this is such a vertical and actually very tight knit area. In order to help hang the captain's figurehead up, I am going to be using this barbecue skewer that I have used all throughout the sculpting process. I'm adding some beads on either end and then gluing it permanently in place so that it can dry. While that's drying, I'm going to work on the ladders. I 3D printed some ladder steps and I'm going to be using barbecue skewers as the poles to go into these steps. This was a bit of a process as I printed it so that they were pretty tight so you can see the skewers going back and forth as I'm pulling them through the ladder steps, but ultimately it ended up being a very easy way to create a ladder and I just went piece by piece until it was done. You see me going back and forth between the ladders and the figurehead because that's very literally how I did this project. There was so much dry time in this, it just made sense to do that. I added another skewer to the back of the captain's head. It's just underneath that wooden pole and I added some more beads. So now I'm going to paint everything with a coat of black paint that includes the skewers and the figurehead and the ladders. And then I can start working on the chains that are going to hang the figurehead from the structure. These are just going to be loops of chains that are going to be in between the beads that I created on the poles. So they're not going to be permanently attached because I don't want it to be transported that way, but I added a lobster claw to the other side so I can loop it over the structure and just kind of clasp it in place so that it's the best height. This was quite a process to get all four chains doing what I wanted them to do, but having them removable made it a bit easier. Once all four chains were attached to all four locations on either side of the barbecue skewers, I could check my results and make sure I was happy with how she was hanging out. And she is a little bit lopsided here. I work on it a bit more off camera, but I just had to see how it looked in the captain's quarters. This is where it is going to be next to the captain's quarters rooms. I also finished painting the ladders so I could add those in place as well. There's going to be one up to the center and then one up all the way to the top. I realized this is going to be a dangerous location for the captain to be working so I needed to add some railings. Thankfully, due to the slotted nature of the aluminum structure, I was able to laser cut some of these pieces that I had previously used on the platforms on the back of this project. I made several that would fit perfectly into this area and I can just bend, kind of bend them and put them into place. So now I'm going to create the railings. I'm going to put some footings onto these ladders just because they don't look very secure to me. And I think on a spaceship, there would at least be the bottom of the ladders screwed down. So I'm going to make a platform that's a double thick piece of mat board. And then I'm going to use some paper to go around the bottom of the ladders. I'm going to do that on both of the ladders feet. And then once that's finished, I can actually cut it at an angle to attach it to the plate. I'm making the plate right now and of course I have to cut off the corners to make them look a bit more spaceshipy, and then everything starts to come together. I'm attaching it at an angle because that's how I want the ladders to be set up against the aluminum framing. Now that everything's connected, I'm adding a few little diamond drills to go on each corner to look like big bolts, and then I'm going to paint everything with a coat of black Mod Podge and then of course with my silver paint in order to blend it in with the rest of the ladder. While I'm at my desk, I decided to go ahead and work on the railings. These are laser cut, so of course I have to take out the individual pieces, and then I am going to be gluing them to a double thickness, so they're a little bit stronger than just one piece of mat board. And of course, I have plenty of triangles to go around. I don't know what I'm going to do with all these triangles in my triangle bag, but they're a never-ending resource with this project. Now I can add in my ladders that seem a bit more secure and like something you would find on a spaceship in a cargo bay area. And I did spray paint the railings because I forgot I had some silver spray paint and that made things go a lot easier with how detailed they are. I was able to just bend them a little bit and get them into place. I also made a railing for the bottom floor area. This would not officially be a captain's quarters video unless I took the entire thing apart and put it back together again. 
I need to do that so I can install this doorway, which is going to go around the infinity hallway right here. I installed this a long time ago, so if you don't remember it or recognize it, that's probably why. It's been pretty rough looking, so it's time to install this frame, which matches the other doors. I'm going to put a light in here, and I'm also going to install two other lights while I have everything taken apart on the other side so that you can see the model ships a little better. So here we go. This was my first time removing this piece after adding so much to it, so there were a couple casualties like the ladder falling on the floor, but that was a good test of its stability and it did not break. Here you can see me testing out the 3D printed frame. It fits perfectly around the infinity hall. There are a few gaps, but I will deal with that later. First, I need to install this LED light. It's going to fit right inside this hole, so I had to mark it with a pencil and then I could cut it out with my craft knife. <laughs> Just caught the camera. Okay. <laughs> that was more dramatic than it needed to be. Before installing the light, I painted the hole green so that it would shine green once everything was lit up, and then I added my LED light with a bit of hot glue. Now that that's in place, I tested out all the lights and I realized I needed to add some electrical tape around the edge just to kind of help with some of that light bleed that I was getting. I also added some black felt, which is going around the very top, and this is also going to help block out some of the light that I saw coming through. Once I was happy with all of the light blockage, I was able to glue it in place and then add some liquid leading like I've been doing on all of my doors. This really helps fill gaps and makes the door look more cohesive with the back panel of the ship. While this frame will be permanently attached to the project, the upper door frame, I guess I would call it, is removable because actually this entire piece is just taped to the back of the project. And if I remove the back of the project, I can still take it out. So that is why I'm not gluing the frame to the infinity hall itself. This will make it easy to repair it if I need to. This is going to be one of the longest wires to date, and I need to get it all the way across the project to that little green box that I installed in the last video. I was able to screw in the wires, and you can see that the green light came on, which is great. Now we can move on to some other lights I made for the back part of this project. I'm using some more of those straws, and this is going to be a really easy light project, which was inspired by Tiny Keyhole Minis. She created a video, which I will put in the description box below, where she created some plain light bulbs with just using hot glue and some LED lights. I decided I was going to do the same thing, but to make it a little bit more spaceship-like, I'm going to use some of these straws I've used all over my project and glue them over the LEDs. And I really like the results, so let's glue them in place. I want these to look a little bit more industrial, so I'm not going to be making any real light fixtures for them except for the straws that I just added. I'm using an awl to push through the foam so I can make a small hole to thread the wires through. This is going to be kind of hidden by the platform that I just removed off the back. I added the shelf back in place so I could kind of get an idea of where I wanted these lights to hang. And one thing I noticed is the straw kind of made a directional spotlight, which was kind of fun because right underneath where this first light is going to hang is going to be the model ship of the Montestrella. I added some little hooks underneath the platform and underneath the stairs. These are going to help my lights hang where I want them to hang without having to build any other type of lighting system. And I do think that keeps it looking a bit more industrial because like in a garage or something, you would just kind of put up a hook and hang the light bulb there. Now that it's all installed, I can put everything back on the shelf. And I forgot to do this in last week's video, so I am going to put all the names of the individual ships on the screen. So those of you who played in the guessing game to see how many you could get, you can know if you were right. Uh, you can let me know how many you got in the comments down below if you would like to.
Last night I finished up the LED lighting and so this morning I want to work on some of the furniture that goes in the lower level of the area I'm working on. This will include a map table that was sent to me in the set that Lori Heisler made when she made the console and the cat tree that was made for me by Veronica. I also plan to make some more cargo boxes and hopefully also a box that I can kind of fill with tools so it looks like someone has been working on the figurehead. It is a restoration bay after all. The first step of this process was to spray paint the map table that Lori made with some silver paint. It was painted black which would totally fit in except that it fit in too much and it was hard to see in the area that it was sitting. So I wanted it to stand out a little more. Then I printed some maps and I'm going to cut these in long strips because I plan to roll them up so they look like scrolls of maps. Before I roll them, I'm just going to scrunch them in my hands to give them a bit more texture like they've been rolled and unrolled several times over the years and haven't always been kept in perfect condition. This was a pretty easy process and I think it adds a lot of detail to the map table to make it look like it's overflowing with all sorts of different maps. So here's how this one is looking. Every time I got them rolled up, I made sure to scrunch the edges. I also folded some of the maps with very distinct creases so that it did look like they were just kept in a different form. For the bottom of the map table, I layered several pieces of paper that didn't have anything printed on them and at the very top I added a map to glue it in place so it did look like maybe it was a pile of maps. I added a box with nothing in it, although you don't know that when you're just looking at the project, added some scrolls, and then I added some to the top of the map table, making sure they look like some of them were draped over the sides. A while ago, another captain, Captain Amira, sent one of these little robots to the captain, and it's so perfect, but it's so tiny, and I'm afraid it's going to get lost. So I decided it would be a great helper for this map table, so I'm going to permanently glue it down. That way I won't be losing this robot at all, and I think it adds such an interesting addition to this map table. I had also mentioned adding the cat tree in this area. I've decided to make what looks like a metal base for the cat tree. This will make sure that if Centauri is on this piece and for some reason there's some turbulence with the captain's ship, it won't be toppling over, ensuring that Centauri is safe. So I am going to just be creating this like I did for the pieces for the bottom of the ladders and I'm gluing this down permanently. This will also make sure that the cat tree, the miniature itself, doesn't fall over if anyone just bumps the table. I'm painting it silver and then aging it so it blends in with the original piece that was sent to me. I'm also going to be aging the map table just slightly. It really doesn't need too much since it's already covered with papers, but I want everything to look like it has some age and a history to it. So now those pieces can be put to the side while they dry and I'm going to work on something for the floor above it. This is going to be just underneath the figurehead. I want to create a drop cloth because that just screams a work in progress to me when there's something on the ground, making sure that no paint drips. So I'm using this piece of fabric that already has kind of a drop cloth look to it, and I'm using two pieces so that it can be a little bit thicker. I added some Mod Podge and I'm going to glue the two pieces together. Before the Mod Podge dries, I'm going to scrunch up the corners and make all sorts of wrinkles in this fabric, and then I'm going to put my one, two, three blocks on top so that the wrinkles stay in place while the Mod Podge dries. This will make sure that the fabric stays like this and looks like it's a heavier piece of cloth in miniature than it actually is. Once it's dry, I can remove the one, two, three blocks and then I can start to add some drops to the drop cloth. It's not a drop cloth unless it has a few stains and so I'm using some watered down paint in order to create these stains. I'm also going to be splatting some different colors on there. I wanna make sure it looks like it's been used for multiple projects. Whenever you're using watered down acrylic paint, please remember that it does dry a lot lighter than what it initially looks like. So if you want it really dark, you do have to add quite a bit. I also added some white on the wrinkles, which I felt made it look a little bit more like canvas that had cracked in places. So here's how it dried. As I said, it gets a lot lighter, but I'm gonna set that to the side and I'm also going to work on some cargo boxes. I put these on the other side where the console is, but this is a cargo bay, so I planned for there to be quite a few boxes everywhere. 
To go along with the drop cloth idea, I'm going to use some of these tool charms and paint them so they look like tools that would be used in this area. I don't know if they really make sense for whatever the captain is doing. I'm not quite sure I have in my head what exact restorations she's doing, but I do want it to look like she's been rummaging through tools and trying to find the best thing for the project. I have this small box that I'm going to leave the lid off of, and I'm just filling it full of odds and ends, and I'm going to have a few tool handles sticking out along with a cloth that I'm going to have on the side. It's always great to add like a little torn piece of cloth and this is actual paper towel that I have been using during the aging process. It had dried so I don't worry about it molding at all but why use, why make a new mess when you can use a mess you've already made, right? <laughs> So I added that cloth to the side of this box and I glued it on top of this collection of boxes So hopefully it gives the hint to the viewer that this entire set of boxes is full of tools And this is what the captain is using in order to fix the figurehead or work on the figurehead Now that all of that is wrapped up, I can start putting everything in place so this is more like a hallway that's leading up to the infinity hall. So everything's going to be pushed to the side. I have the map table closest to the infinity hall because that's what the captain might be looking at to make sure that she's transporting herself or her crew to the correct location. I'm also adding in another one of these consoles you've seen in other places. I had printed three to begin with and this is where the final one is going to go. I'm adding some of those cargo boxes just behind the ladder because it will take up some space that would otherwise be unused. This pile of tool items and boxes that I created is going to go upstairs up the ladder from the place we were just in and is going to be near the figurehead giving the appearance that it's being worked on. I'm also going to add the drop cloth on the floor just underneath the figurehead I will also be adding another bunch of tools down there. There's this little handsaw and a bit of turpentine where the captain might be removing some paint. I skipped over the process of adding the maps and signs last time. However, I won't do that this time. I'll show you how I'm adding them all in. I wanted a few maps pinned up behind the map table. And of course I have to add in the door sign that says transport hall. I found these little guard cat signs, which I think is so funny to think about, like if you get transported onto a ship and the first thing you see is a cat tree and a little sign that says guard cat. One of my patrons had a fantastic idea of adding this caution tape. So I am gonna be adding this just to the front of the cat tree. I thought about adding it around it, but I don't know if everything will always be in the exact same location. So I'm going to add it to the front. And then I also plan to add some of the caution tape to the back of my project as well, where it looks really industrial. Upstairs, I'm simply adding the restoration bay sign, and then I'm also adding a falling danger sign. There's not going to be a ton of signage up here, but that's enough to kind of hopefully give you an idea of what's going on. As I said, I'm adding some caution tape to this area. This was a really fun detail to add in because it involved a lot of aging, especially because this is on the floor, so it would be stepped on quite a bit. I added it in any of the areas that I thought would be a tricky area where you might trip, but I like it so much that I might add it in a few more areas in the future. I finished up by adding some aging to all of these things I just glued on, and that was it for this area. Now that all those individual miniatures are in place, it's time to add the final bit of lighting. This will actually, I think, be the very last amount of lighting I need for the whole project, which means I can make sure that all the wires and cords are in place and under control because I don't think I'll be adding anything else. This whole project has been such an undertaking and an experiment and a learning process for me when it comes to the lighting that it feels very rewarding to say that this is the last piece that needs to go in. I'm going to be adding it into the straw like I did on the console area so that it diffuses the light and really lights up this bay. This is going to give a highlight onto the figurehead so it really stands out to those who are viewing it. I added the figurehead back in and I really like how it lights it up. In order to hook this all into my previous lights, I do have the cord going across the front 
So I'm trying to blend that all in with the rest of the ship with some watered down paint. Note I do have this unplugged while I'm doing it and will let it dry completely before I plug it back in. But now that all of that is done, we can look at the final result. I hope you like it. I did have one more delivery for the dressing room. Y'all have been so kind to send me things to finish up that space. So I'm going to add those items in now. Huge thank you to Kat and Chelsea for creating these two hats for the dressing room. They noticed that there weren't any 17th century looking hats to go along with the 17th century coat and very kindly made these beautiful hats for me. Now that I have all these new pieces, including the case that was sent by Fran last week, I'm going to have to sit down and rearrange to make sure I have everything looking its best in the dressing room. Chelsea also made this sword and scabbard for the captain. It is removable. It's just amazing in its detail, especially with the blue tassel that matches the captain's coat. I'm going to put this upstairs in the captain's cabin in case she needs to defend herself unexpectedly. Thank you so much, Kat and Chelsea. I also need to update my to-do list. This list has followed me along through all of these final videos on this project and it gives me so much joy to cross out so much this time. Well, it doesn't look like that much, but so much has been crossed out. So I'm celebrating that. And I lost my pink highlighter. So I'm using my yellow highlighter to figure out what needs to be done next. And yes, on there you do see make other character and that has to do with the story. As you can see, there's not very much left on this list. And one of the items that's on there is a new character. And that new character will be in the next video that you see. Speaking of the next video, at the moment, I think I will have time to create it before I go to the museum, but I'm not sure. If I get stressed out and feel like I'm not getting things done in time, I won't be worrying about editing. But if I feel like I have time, I hopefully will have one more video up for you by the end of October. In the next video, I'll also be wrapping up some other details and some final things that will just kind of put the, what is the phrase, put the bow on the present put the put the star on the tree I don't know I can't remember what the phrase is <laughs> it'll just kind of wrap everything up so that it's to the level that I really want it to be before it's in a museum case so I hope you enjoyed it I will see you in the next one whenever that happens to be thank you for watching bye just a sliver a little bitty tiny bit is left. Ugh, it's bright. Stop being so bright. Also, tell a quick story on Miss Stormy here. This morning, a huge fly was in my studio and I tried to get it and I missed. And so I told Stormy, I was like, do I have to do all the jobs around here? I guess I was letting her know that I felt like bug control was her job. And I kid you not, 10 minutes later, guess who caught the fly? Yes, it was you. It was you, you caught the fly. I honestly don't know how she caught it, uh, but she did. I saw her playing with something on the floor and it was the fly, so gross. She did get a treat. I traded her the fly for a treat.
Yes, 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 yes. Good job, good job.